Good morning. It is December 24th. New Year, uh, Christmas Eve. I about said New Year's Eve. Christmas Eve. And we're finishing up our Luke study. Chapter 23 and 24. We started talking a little bit in the last couple of chapters about the crucifixion of Christ. And in chapter 23, we see he goes before Pilate and Herod. And they both find no fault in Christ. Yet, the people cry out for him to be crucified. Release the murderer, crucify the innocent. And when he was on the cross, the one of the thieves that was crucified with him started mocking him. Saying, save yourself and us. The other one's like, man, don't you fear God? This guy's done nothing wrong. At least we're paying for crimes we committed. And he asked Jesus, he goes, will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? Jesus said, I, prom I tell you, you will be with me. Today you shall be with me in, in paradise. Jesus, for his, even from the cross, was thinking of others, forgiving people. And in his word, in the Gospels is what we call Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. In those four Gospels, we find the entire life of Christ. Many different miracles. And sometimes when I'm thinking of the, of the story of the crucifixion, I kind of start blending all the four Gospels together. But in uh, Luke, particularly, in Luke chapter 24, he was talking about reminding everybody about his crucifixion. And when he, he rose from the grave, and how he had told them while he was still with them that he would, in Luke's account, he tells, he says, Father, into thy hands I commend thy spirit, my spirit. Over in John's, he says, it is finished. I made reference to that in the last video. That God put a permanent in, that he was saying, it's finished, it's over, it's done. I remember... A thing, a saying, a friend of mine would always say, she said, God doesn't have a problem. He only has a plan. Anytime I would say something to her, she said, God doesn't have a problem. He only has a plan. And in chapter 24, we see that Jesus had rose from the grave. And there was two of them. They, they had gone to the tomb to see his body. And it was gone. There was a couple of walking on a road to Emmaus. Um, we actually have an old song. Uh, it's called Road to, road to Emmaus. I think it's the name of it. But it's talking about on the way to, on a road to Emmaus, they met Jesus. And I, I read, was reading that and I started singing that song in my head. On the road to Emmaus, he reminded them there was a plan. From the beginning to the end, there is a plan. This whole scripture is about Jesus and God's plan. His saying, it is finished in John. And Luke, he says, into your hands I command my spirit. He's saying, it's done. He proved his resurrection he proved his resurrection to his disciples by appearing to them. As they're talking and discussing, did we really see what we thought we saw on the road to Emmaus? He appears in the room. And he asks them, why are you troubled? Why do thoughts arise in your heart? Behold my hands and feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bone, as ye see me have. He showed them the flesh and bone risen Savior. And then he asked them if they have meat, and they gave him a fish. And then he reminded them of the words that he spoke to them, that all things must be fulfilled that was written in the law of Moses and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning him. Those are all the Old Testament books that talked about his coming. He said, I had to fulfill all of that 
and now I have. And then he says, at the end, ye are the witness of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And then he was taken into heaven. And I read that and it hit me like, wow! <laughs> it's like, Choom. hit me like, well, somebody's smacking me with a word. Terry, if they had not tarried in Jerusalem, would they have gotten the power to be the witnesses of God? To the Holy Spirit power that gives you the strength to stand up when everybody else runs off. See, the last video we talked about the angel ministering to Jesus. And how the drop of blood, that was the, I'm done, let's move on, my time here is over. Let's get done what's got to be done. Let's fulfill the prophecy. He made up his mind. He fulfilled the prophecy. And then he tells them to tarry. To wait. Talking with Brett, I said, hey, you know, I'm wondering if some of the reasons why we don't see the power of God as much today is because we forget to tarry in his word. To tarry in prayer. To wait upon the Lord. Because Jesus told his disciples, greater things will these do because I go to my Father. We sing a song, the same spirit that rose Jesus from the grave lives in us. But do we really believe that? Jesus says, Terry, wait for the power upon high and be my witnesses. Sometimes I think we just need to tarry longer in His promises. We need to tarry longer in His promises, in His Word, and in prayer to see the power of God move. Because just as those guys that were on the road to Emmaus didn't fully understand they were talking to Jesus until later, Sometimes I think we don't fully see the promises of God until we wait. Until we have our eyes opened by the Spirit of the Lord. From Brett and Cindy at TN Living, our family to yours, have a very Merry Christmas. God bless you all.